all right i think we are live what's going on good people welcome back to another episode of the bison trading show coming at you live from the bison trading lab man it's a beautiful friday morning here to trade with you in our live session where we put together everything that we went over on tuesday and thursday and as well as throughout the week and we try and combine all of those things and show you how to use that in a practical live trading environment so today we'll be more so focusing on the dow jones futures we have been having some really nice moves over this past week so hopefully we can see that continue as we go into today's session which should be starting in about six and a half minutes so let's go ahead and get this pre-market analysis out of the way so we can figure out how exactly we want to trade this market going into the open so let's go ahead and start from a daily perspective you always want to start with top-down analysis because top-down analysis shows you the trend not only on the longer term picture but also on the shorter term picture as well because it's important to be able to understand both of those and how they relate to each other if you want to have a successful trading session so coming off of last night's analysis we were telling you guys how for the most part bulls were really not back in control for this overall uptrend that we're in until we break back past this breakdown candle right here the high for this candle is 34,325 and the open is at 242 so we'll be looking for the 242 to get broken but remind you this is us 30 it's not actually the dow jones so let's go to the dow jones features because the prices are slightly different so the high for this candle is 227 and the open is 143 right now we're about 34,070 so that's something that we need to take into consideration until we break back above that breakdown candle we have to be skeptical about the long trade but when we break it down to the smaller time frames we can see that for the most part the bulls are definitely showing their hand now the only question is will they have enough momentum to get past the supply zone that they're located at right now that's the main question so let's flash back over to us 30 where we have our analysis at right now notice look at these two red lines right here these two red lines represent a zone that prices have been stuck in since around april 16th now we did have one false breakout to the upside and then we had another false breakout to the downside all of that happened just for prices to come right back into the overall zone so let's let me make it a little bit more clear for you guys all right so we can see that for the most part we're still within that overall zone now if we break up past that zone that's definitely a bullish sign but until then we have to assume that the the consolidation range should hold up but we'll go into the session prepare for either one of those scenarios either a break above or just a consolidation zone and if we see that we might have to call it a a day a little bit early because that's not the type of markets that we want to trade in or well, at least for me and whenever you whenever you see a market like that just leave it alone but overall we know that the trend is definitely up now I'm just trying to gauge this pullback right here I want to see if this is going to end up being a lower high because I have seldom seen moves like this on the Dow Jones where prices fall by hundreds and thousands of points, right? This was a 1600 point drop. So just see it come all the way back to where it was before. Uh, I just can't see it happening. It could. The uptrend is very strong right now, but I still think the possibility of a another sell off could be imminent. So we'll keep that in mind but let's actually break it down to the five minute chart because what that's what we'll be trading on we'll be trading on the five the 15 and the one minute charts all right mm -mm. yeah in terms of what we see right here right now i would definitely have to lean more towards prices continuing to move up up until we get to that supply zone so let's go ahead and pull up our platform today we will be trading live in terms of risk my limits today are forty dollars which gives me about four trades four losses before i have to call it a day and i would like to make about 50 points and then call it a day or catch one or two good trades whichever one comes first i was trading a little bit in the pre-market let me show you guys those trades 
I had one break even trade right here and then I took two losses thinking that this downtrend would continue but that just wasn't the case so right now my goal is to make back those two trades plus more and I like what I'm seeing so far we have seen that prices have had a very 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 strong up move coming off of this initial down move now this down move came from the retail sales number that came out a little bit earlier this morning so make sure if you guys have anything that you want to contribute go ahead and drop it in the chat over here we will be live over here checking back and forth here and there so make sure you guys check me out over there but other than that, man, we got about 12 seconds until this market opens. So let's get it, man. Should be a good day today. We see that the uptrend is super strong right now. Coming up into that supply zone at 130. All right, you guys can see. You see that supply zone? Look at how many times prices have got held up right here. We finally broke it now that the market has just opened. So let's see if they can maintain that momentum. We came up into the 150 level. That's a major half number level. Right now, we're seeing a lot of momentum. So let's see if we can't catch a little bit of that. Let's put our order back down here at 53. But the way this thing is moving, I don't think we're coming back to 53. As a matter of fact, we're going all the way up to 200. That's what it looks like. But I'll keep my order down here at 53. If prices uh, get held up, a little bit before that I'll probably move my order up but I like 53 I like to put my orders around the half number levels or quarter levels so either a 25 a 50 a 75 or a double zero number those are usually where for me for my strategy I see the most action and usually when I put my orders there it works out more often than it than it doesn't I usually take my losses when I try and deviate from that so I want to be disciplined today and focus on taking high quality setups. That's it. And also, I'll be clicking over and flashing over to the pound a little bit because the pound is having a nice uptrend as well. So if we see anything happening over in that department, we might take some trades over there, too. But for the most part, we want to focus on a Dow Jones. Let me make sure my my music isn't playing because last time they copyrighted me. I was like, wow, that's how y'all going to do me. But anyway, so whenever you see a strong opening drive, when the market first opens, like we seen right here, notice how let's measure this candle. The open for this candle was thirty four thousand one eighteen. We're at one seventy five right now. So we move more than 60 points in less than two minutes. That's a very strong open. And it usually indicates that maybe potentially that movement can continue for the rest of the session i think we saw that yesterday and yesterday's session as well so in the market sometimes when you see one thing and then see the next thing the same day you don't have to make it complicated you just do the same thing so it doesn't look like prices are coming back to the 50 right now right now they're playing around the next quarter level to 75 so we might consider going long right there, but we want to give it a little bit of time because it is kind of trending below that 75. As long as it's below 75, you don't want to go long because it could always come back to that 50 level, hit your order right there, and then continue moving up. So right now we're playing around the 60s. We're back into the 50s and our order has been filled. Got filled in at 53. Now let's see if we can't take this back up all the way to 200. Our profit target at 201. Our stop loss is 20 points below at 132. We got in at 153. So that's actually 21 points. But you get my gist. Mm, that 50 level, I don't know. It doesn't look like it wants to hold up. Nah, they probably gonna get stopped out on this one. But that's that's okay. But until our stop gets hit, we don't we don't do anything. All right, so that's our stop. Stop just got hit. So let's see exactly why that happened. We were a little bit early on the uptrend for sure. 
So it looks like the, the Bulls have kind of lost all of the momentum that they just had. They went straight up and came straight back down. So now I think that we're definitely in more of a seller's market. Kind of matching the initial reaction that we had when the retail number came out at 830 this morning. So that's pretty interesting to see. With that being said, we could probably look to look, uh, we could probably start to look for short trades right about now. So let's go ahead and put our orders right here at the last low. Well, excuse me, the last high, which should act as resistance. This level right here, right off of this wick at 128, 127, that, air, that general 125 ish area. And this trade that I just took is actually. The loss that we just took, that's my third loss for the day because I had two losses from the pre-market session. So remember, my risk limit today, four trades, four losses, I'm done. So if we take another loss, we got to call it early. You know that it sucks to have to do that, but that's just a part of trading. You got to be disciplined because if you sit there and just keep trying at the market when you're not in tune with it, it won't lead to anything good. You have to be your own trading coach. Think about LeBron James or something. Even though he might perform well most of the time, if he's performing poorly, what's his coach going to do? He's going to be like, hey, Brian, come here, man. Come sit down real quick. We have to be our own coaches out here in this trading world, man. Because this market will eat you up if you let it. But that's not what we want at all. Now, so far, we've bounced off of that 100 level. It seems like we're pulling back. We have failed to break. This breakdown candle right here or the top of it at 118. So that's a good sign. We're seeing that the sellers are definitely in the market. I don't want to move my order, though, because I still think we have a good chance of coming back and testing this wick right here. For some reason, that once that 25 level, all of the quarters, the half numbers and the whole numbers, they always act like a magnet. When prices get close enough to them, they just have a tendency to just 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 boom and snap and get close to it. So you always want to be patient because I've been in so many scenarios where it looks good and appealing in the moment. So I take the trade and then literally 30 seconds later, it comes back to the area I thought it would. So that's why patience is so important. If you miss the trade, you miss the trade. It's all good. You don't have to trip about it because this market is open six hours and 30 minutes from 930 to four o'clock. If you miss one move, just wait for the next one. It's all good. So now that we've established a lower high, right? This is our lower high right here in comparison to where we came from. Now we can definitely start looking to play that down movement. And also we could be potentially trying to come back to test 34,000 because this morning earlier on in a pre-market session, we tried to come back to that number, right? But we only got to 34,005. So it never really actually hit that number. So. I've seen scenarios where prices move all the way back up and then eventually come back down to actually truly test that level that they tried to earlier in the session. So that's a potential setup that we could be looking for, too. I think once prices break below thirty four thousand one hundred and stay below it, we could definitely expect that move to play out. So right now, prices are on their way back up to one twenty five. The only thing that concerns me is that we are we are having a little bit of a bullish engulfing right here, but I think it could potentially be a false breakout. So if we get a wick off of this candle, it should hit our order. All right, we're about two points away. All right, our entry has been filled at 27. I don't like that bullish engulfing. I think that's the only thing that's really a con for this trade. Everything else is a pro. Now let's check the longer term charts to make sure we're in line. It's hard to really say what's going on right now. We forming more of a doji candle. A doji represents indecision in the market. So far we're in profit, but very minimal. That could change at any moment in time. It's playing around the 25 level. So let's see if it continues higher. Don't expect it to, but if it does, that's why we have our stop to protect us. Make sure that we keep our 
are risk limited and well defined. And that's the good thing about stocks. Sometimes in the market, you could just think, oh, yeah, it's going to do this. It's going to do this. But if it doesn't, you always want to make sure you have protection. It's like wearing a seatbelt in a car. You don't plan to crash. But if you do, it's going to be nice to have that seatbelt there to protect you. So you can see that our our actual stop has been moved to break even. I have an automatic setting on here. So when it hits 15 points in profit, it automatically moves my stop up to break even so that way we can have a risk-free trade uh minus the commissions commissions are about a dollar per trade for the dow jones looks like we're about to get that that limit that stop got hit now we could think about getting back in here but one thing i learned about break even stops just for my strategy in general is that once that break even stop gets activated if it comes back and gets hit don't try and take the same trade because then you're revenge trading and trying to force the market to go the way that you want it to. But one thing we know about the market is that the market has a mind of its own. It doesn't listen to me. It doesn't listen to you. It listens to itself. If the market says it wants to go up. That's what it's going to do, no matter how much we want it to go down. So we have to trade in line with the market. We don't tell the market what to do. It's the other way around. The market tells us how we need to move in that particular session so this has actually been an interesting open so far we had a huge move up right about 100 points up came straight back down made a higher low and now it looks like we're on our way right back up so this looks more like a consolidation zone in my opinion so i would say until we break down below 100 or until we get above 175 it's really not too much I can do here. And also, if we go back and analyze that trade that I just took, I should have been cognizant. I should have been cognizant enough to know that when I see a bullish engulfing, you don't fight that. No matter how much you think the trend is, might be going down, if you see that bullish engulfing, please don't short. And luckily, we were able to just get stopped out at break even, but that could have been ugly. So I need to get focused and make sure that I'm taking the right trades because at that point, I was definitely trying to force it. That's not what we want to do in the markets. So we're coming up to that 175 level. We're pushing through the 60s right now. Let's see what's going on with the pound for a second. We're about to break above 141 on GU, at least for the futures contract. All right, let's get let's get a good look on what's going on on the five. All right, so the sellers did try to come in. They tried to step in, but the buyers did their thing. And if you look at what's happened since 830, we've really been in a nice uptrend. We had our first higher low right here at 53, right? We had our next higher low right here at 34,078. So that right there tells us one thing we're in an uptrend for the moment right whenever you see higher highs and higher lows that tells you the trend is up and remember what we looked at from our pre-market analysis we know that the overall trend is up so this movement that we're seeing right now lines up with the overall trend and that's what we like to see so now we've been able to identify what direction the trend is all we have to do now is figure out the best entries to get into this market from so in order to do that, we need to look to the left and figure out what levels were previous highs, because once previous highs get broken through, they then become support levels. So what used to be resistance now becomes support. When you watch our stream, that's what we talk about when we say duality. That's what we like to call it. Duality means two. Right. So that's what that level represents. At first, it's resistance. When it's broken through, it now becomes support. So it seems like we made our next higher low right here at 150, right? So we're pushing up to 175. Once we get above that, we can pretty much be a little bit more confident that we can see higher prices. Now we just need to look for our higher low. We also want to keep our eyes on volume. Until we see exhaustion volume, the trend still has room to run. Exhaustion volume simply represents a candle like this. Well, a volume bar like this. Notice how this volume bar right here 
is higher than anything relatively around it, right? Volume is a relative concept. If the volume is higher than what it's used to be, that more than likely means exhaustion, but only in extreme cases. This one right here, you could count this as exhaustion, but also you gotta remember at the open, the candle is always gonna be huge. It's probably gonna be the biggest candle on the chart, right? So notice how since that time, volume has kind of decreased a little bit. Popped up a little bit on this volume bar. As we came back into these overall highs, this supply zone up here, so that makes sense. We're seeing a little bit of exhaustion, but not enough to believe that the trend is over. So for the most part, we have the green light to go long. We just need to find the best prices. I'm looking for prices to come back to this 200 level. That's overall what I'm trying to aim for. So, you know me, I like to put my orders at the quarter levels. So I like to put it just below 75. So I'll put my order at 34,172 and then look to take it back to around 205. But it looks like prices are gonna go there without us. Right now we're touching 199. That green line that keeps moving up represents the daily high. So every time prices push up, that line will move. And that's very useful because it tells us that no matter what you see, you never wanna go long at the daily high. You always wanna wait for a little bit of a pullback because one of the one of the tried and true theories about the market is buy low, sell high. Now, sometimes you can buy high and sell higher, but you take a lot of risk when you do that. I like to trade, you know, I wouldn't say risk-free because that's impossible, but I like to mitigate my risk and minimize it as much as I can at every opportunity and chance that I have. So let's see if we can come back to that 175 quarter level. And I hope you guys uh, were able to catch my story on Wednesday. When we had that big down day, I was telling you guys, buy the dip. Of course, buy responsibly at major support levels. But we know one thing about the Dow Jones and most US indices is that they like to move up so when you get a dip and you get an opportunity to get prices at a lower value take advantage if you have the capital available and over the past couple of days we well today and yesterday we've been seeing a crazy just relentless uptrend like the sellers never even had anything going on on wednesday the buyers came right back in and said hey sellers you guys had your time all right you had your time it's our time right now. So that's good for us because we have a clearly defined trend. Now, all we have to do is be patient as traders and wait for this market to come to us. We could chase it, but we wanna let it come to us. That's the goal. So now that we've passed that 200 level, we should start thinking about where exactly we wanna hop in. Let's look to the left and find our previous highs. So we have a high right here at 190. That should hold up as support if prices are able to come back to that level. So let's go ahead and move our prices back up to about 195-ish. And let's see what we can get. So the next level that we're looking for prices to hit is 34,225, our next quarter level above. Now, we usually don't like to buy at higher prices, but if we judge this trend, remember what I was telling you guys earlier about the market, when you see one thing that looks exactly as it did the day before and the market scenario lines up and it's not any different, take the same trade. Yesterday, the trend was also a runaway trend where you really didn't have any pullbacks. You more so had just consolidation zones where it moved sideways, but it didn't really pull back too much and come back to you. So it looks like we may be in that similar situation today. Now, whenever you wanna buy at higher prices, just make sure you don't see exhaustion volume. If you don't see exhaustion, then you have the green light to go long and buy higher and look to sell higher. So for me, that might be a potential possibility. I'll probably say we can do that until prices hit 250. Once they hit 250, we have to reevaluate because that's a major quarter level, right? So when we see major quarter levels, we definitely want to make sure that if we have a trade, we take profits or we reevaluate whether or not we want to stay in, add to it or trim our position.
So I like this level at 195. Because when you push past a major 100 level, like a 100, 200, 300, or so forth and so on, a lot of times if the trend is strong, the pullbacks will be, you know, a little bit more violent. So you might have orders at 204, but it might pop flash all the way down to 190, 185 even. So let's see if we can get a pullback. And in the meantime, let's check on the pound. It hasn't broken 141, but it's darn close. About three pips away. All right. So we're pushing back into those 200s. Let's see if we can get 200 even and then break back into the 190s. We're getting close. Right now we're in the two tens. Now we're back into the, the single digits. Come on, sellers, give us a good pullback. Come on, sellers. There you go. There we go. We're almost back at two hundred. Let's see if we can break it. Let's see if we can see one ninety. We see one ninety. One ninety four. Our order has been hit. I like that. Now we're looking to take it back up to around 250. Now we don't want to take it all the way up. We want to get out slightly before that. So we'll move our take profit to 246. We have our stop around 21 points below our entry at 73. Our entry is at 94. When that 15, uh, that 15 point, that 15 point gain gets hit, our stop will be moved to break even. As you guys just saw, it snapped back up to the blue line. So right now we have a risk-free trade. So let's let this thing run, man. We have a long tail candle wick right here that usually marks the end of most pullbacks. Not only do we have a long tail candle wick, we have a long tail candle wick on higher volume down here. You guys see that? See how this volume bar is higher than all of the ones before it, at least for the past six minutes? That tells you that the pullback has exhausted itself. So that means that you pretty much have the green light to hold on to that trade. And even if it doesn't play out, you still have your stop at break even. So everything is all good. But I like I like the potential bull move right here. I like that long tail candle wick. I've seen situations where it'll come back and test that wick again. So maybe our break even stop gets hit. But I don't know. I like this trade. So we'll stick with it. Come on, bulls. Let's step back in and go long right here. And let's also check the longer term charts to make sure we're not running into a major resistance level up above. I don't see anything on the 15. Let's go to the hourly. Oh, look at this over here. See what we're running into? That's why we're kind of struggling around this area. But I, I say one thing, if we can break past here, the uptrend is on, baby. Like it's over with. In a good way. In a good way. So now that we're up a little bit, let's go ahead and start trailing our stop. Because I always like the when my when my trade is getting good profits, I just want to move my stop up a little bit because commissions for the Dow Jones when you trade futures or micro contracts like I'm trading. I think my my value is around a dollar and 20 cents in commissions for every trade round trip. So about 60 cents each way. So you move it up about three cents. I mean, three pips is 50 cents per point. And uh, hold on. We'll talk about that later. I'm trying to think about whether or not I should get out at 225 or let the thing ride. But since we haven't seen exhaustion volume, we got to stick to what we said earlier and let that thing ride. We're about 11 points away from our take profit. So that's pretty decent. If we get that trade, man, we'll go ahead and probably, you know, switch over to something else, but call it a day in terms of trading. I'll just give you guys some more analysis for a few minutes. Let's, uh, while we're waiting for that trade to get hit, man, let's check the chat. Hey, I see you. That's my partner, D guy. D guy, the three guy. That's Pearl Financial. You know him. We always do, uh, that's the other half of the Bison Trading Show crew. 
We do our show every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. So today he's out getting money in other places. You know, he has a lot of jobs. So he's in the chat dropping info. And it's good to see that he thinks the same way I'm thinking. He said, go long. And guess what we did? We went long. So shout out to him, man. Always coming through with the good info. Actually, as a matter of fact, on Wednesday, I caught 130 points on the Dow Jones based off of a zone that we had charted up together and that he had recommended. Because I analyzed the chart. I didn't even see the zone at first. But then he came in, he did his analysis, and he was like, you don't see that zone right there? I was like, where? And then he came in, he drew it perfectly. And the next day, I ended up using it. So shout out to him. Now, right now, if we look at the volume, we kind of peaked up a little bit. It's a little bit of exhaustion, right? So that means that we could potentially pull back a little bit. So in those cases, when we have good profits like we have right now, we're up about 36 points, right? We want to make sure we continue to trail our stock. So let's move it up to 204. Worst case scenario, we get 10 points out of this trade. Best case scenario, we get what? 50 points out of this trade. So if this market is in an uptrend, we should expect it to come back, retest what used to be previous highs. That's where our higher lows should get created. And that's what we just saw with this little wick right here. It came back, it tapped right off of a level that used to be resistance. So that's the duality that we were telling you guys about a little bit earlier. What used to be resistance, when prices break above it, it then becomes support. So we're about four points away right now from our take profit almost there come on come on market we just need one last push or we might just go ahead and get out early i mean what's the difference between 40 and 46 it's basically the same you don't want to be stubborn when you see prices start moving in your direction but as a matter of fact since we're thinking about that let's go ahead and just move our stop up a little bit more so best case worst case scenario excuse me we get 94 plus uh plus six so that's what 26 points at worst 50 points at best i mean that's a good trade regardless and anytime i've ever thought about taking a trade early and saying yeah let me close it out right here usually if i would have gave that trade two minutes or three minutes it would have hit my target so that's what i'm doing right now and it looks like Ah, they came all the way up to 45. Come on, market. Why are you playing with me like this? This is a test, a test of patience. So let's pass the test. There we go. Boom. Order got filled. Profit target reached. Let's go. That's what we like to see, man. That was perfect. So notice how we initially started out on the wrong side of the market but as things changed we started to say look let's let's take a, a step back let's analyze what's going on right we took this loss right here and this loss right here we said man market is definitely not moving down we went back we analyzed the higher time frames and we said oh okay we see what's going on we have a bullish engulfing we have a higher low we made another higher low higher high another higher low all we did was we were patient we waited for prices to come back retest the area that we know should be a support level right because when you're in an uptrend you should expect your higher lows to be established somewhere around what used to be the previous highs we were patient we waited for our orders we had some ideas about man maybe we should go high at higher prices but then logic kicked back then and said hey just be patient, man. That market is going to come back to you. So we were able to do exactly what we wanted to. We didn't want to chase the market. We let the market come to us. And we were able to catch a nice 52-point trade. And on that note, man, I'll probably have to call it a day. You have a good trade like that, 52 points on the Dow Jones, man. You should be proud of yourself. I'm glad I was able to make that happen, and I'm glad I was able to have you guys tune in with me. That's the part that I love the most. So let's go ahead and take a look at the pound. The pound has broken past that 141 even level for at least for the future side, right? So that's a very strong uptrend. If you guys like GU, I would recommend that maybe you trade it right now. Now, don't, don't put in an order, 
but just start analyzing. So let's do that for ourselves as well. Now you probably are wondering why I have it as a line chart. Well, change to the candlesticks, you can see why. The volume for the micro contracts for the pound, it's really not all that high. Like if we pull up the box, you see the upper right hand corner over here? I mean, excuse me, the upper left hand corner over here, up here, like right here, you see the volume? The volume is in that box on the last on the last line. Now notice how most of the candles, we look at the average volume, we got six, five, 28, nine, two, one, three, one, four, two, 18, six, four. So for the most part, the volume on a one minute chart for the pound is usually under 10 contracts, which is very light because if you think about it, out of all the people in the world trading this contract, only 10 of them got traded during this time. And when you have a, a low volume environment, you tend to see candles like this where the candles are not full, right? So that's why you see this looking like this, but it doesn't mean that the chart is not moving. That's why I move it to the line chart so we can get a clear view of what we actually see. So based on that, we know that the trend is up, right? So what do we do now? We look for levels that used to be what? That used to be what? That's right. Areas that used to be previous highs. So let's look to the left. The first level that pops out to me is this level right here at one th at a uh, 140.98. And it's, it's crazy and such a coincidence that as soon as we identify that level, look at where prices pull back to. They pull right back to that area. So if you're trading this on a one minute chart, that could be a potential uh, long trade for you. Also don't wanna ignore this double top that you saw towards the daily highs, but prices pull back to the last low, excuse me, to the last high. That's solid market structure right there. But also, that's a one minute chart. You always want to look at the bigger picture as well. Make sure you're not running into a big supply level that you don't know about. And actually, if we look at this chart, we are running into resistance and a supply zone ahead. Right. So let's look at this right here at 141.08. And we can change it back to the candlesticks because on the hourly chart, it's enough volume for us to have full form candles. So notice we got above these levels back on May 10th in the morning we stayed above them for about two days and then we pop right back down below it and we finally been able to come back up to it so now we have to ask ourselves will this level act as resistance and continue moving prices down well in order for us to figure out exactly if that will happen we need to look at the longer term picture so let's take it up to the daily chart this auto fit now you're probably wondering why it's not a complete chart. Futures contracts are temporary. Futures contracts only trade for a certain period of time and then they expire and the next contract gets started. So that's why you only see prices going back to uh, December 25th. Now if we look at the daily chart though, look at what's going on. We're coming up into a level that used to be major resistance. We had a long tail candle wick and then that started the next leg of the downtrend. We had a downtrend from February 24th all the way until this double bottom was formed in mid-April around April 12th. Now since that point we've been able to move back up to those levels but we should definitely expect some type of resistance up here. So that's why you always look at the bigger picture so you can understand exactly what you're seeing on the lower time frames and how that fits into the bigger, you know, really bigger picture and what's really going on. So now with that being known, let's break it down to the 15. We see that the trend is definitely strong. So what should we look for? We should look for the long trades. We break it down to the one minute. And look at what happened. Prices came back to that last low, just like we projected. They hit it and they bounced up. So that's the great thing about trading trend in markets. If you look for that type of market structure and you're just patient and you wait for your prices to come to you, you can see some good things happen for you. So let's get back to the Dow Jones and see what's going on over here. I wanna give you guys an analysis for the rest of the day before I get off of here. Hmm. All right, so prices came back down. 
while we were on GU, they tested 225. We actually missed that move. See, so that's why I was that's why I wanted to get out at 250 because I knew that that was a major quarter level and we probably would see some type of pullback. I didn't expect it to be this strong, but it eventually came all the way back to what used to be the last high. So even when it ran all the way up, where did it come back down to? Right here at the last high. So when you're in a strong uptrend, that's what you should look for. It works 90%, well not 90, 80% of the time it works. You use good risk management, you can control your losses on the other 20% and end up making good profits. So we know that the trend is up. So now in order to figure out if I can recommend you guys to go long, we need to see what the overall trend is. Remember from our pre-market analysis, we know that the overall trend is definitely up. So let's see. So remember how I told you guys, once we break past this overall supply zone over here from 220, and I think if I'm not mistaken, when we looked at the trading view chart, the high, the high price that we were looking for was 227. That was the high for that breakdown candle that we were looking at. So now that we've broken past that level, we've broken past it extremely well. We're in the 250s now. So that means that, yeah, the uptrend is confirmed. It's 100% validated now. So now we just need to find the best levels. If you want to be super conservative, I would recommend that you guys wait for prices to either come back down to 34,175. Start looking for long trades there. If you see a higher low, once you get a bounce from there, you can take a long trade or you could really wait for it to come all the way back here to 120. Now, if it comes back to that level, it might be a too strong of a pullback where the sellers might say, hey, we want to keep this thing going. So keep that in mind as well. But I think if you could catch it from 120 and don't just buy it when it hits that level, don't ever do that. Make sure you see the level bounce. That's the first part of your strategy. But then you want to see a higher low get form. You see that higher low get form. Now you can go long because you have all the confirmation that you need. So those are the levels that I would spot out for you guys. Me personally, I would probably wait for 175. You want to be super conservative, you can wait for 125. I think the overall trend does have some room to run. And before we go, always want to make sure you do one thing when you end your trading session, and that's journalize your trades and record your records. However way you do it is fine. It doesn't really matter how, just as long as you do it. Now, me personally, my favorite method is to screenshot my trades. So let me go ahead and mark it up. This is trade number three. All right. Where's trade one? And one last one, we got trade number two. Now you can you can choose to use as much detail or as little or as little detail as you want for your charts. Me, I like to have detail because in the moment you remember what happened. But when you look at this chart, you know, three, four months down the line, you're not going to really remember what happened today because you see so many charts that everything starts to blend together over time. So it's nice to have clear cut records that tell you, oh, OK, this is exactly what I was doing. So what I do is not only do I screenshot it, but I also do a written record of the trade that I took. So that way, when I see the picture, if I'm confused about what happened, I can just go back to that journal entry for that day and I can see exactly how I was thinking. And then also one more one more reason. I mean, one more uh, method that you guys can use is what we're doing right now. Record your trades live. So that way you get the whole picture. You don't have to look at a screenshot and then read the text you can just go back and watch the video so let's go ahead and take a screenshot of this if you have windows the app is called snipping tool if you have mac i think it might be the same thing but maybe under a different name uh oh don't tell me my computer froze oh no just it's just slow so this right here is my chart records folder I save all of my charts in here. I have charts going back all the way to 2016. Records going back all the way to 2013. 
And I think that can be helpful for you guys too, because you can go back over time and kind of review your trading history. Because a lot of the good trades that I made in the past, I forgot about them until I went back and looked at my journal and said, oh yeah, hold on. The things that worked before, when I'm looking at the market today, they're still working now. So let me take those type of trades. And also on the flip side, and one last, uh, hold on. Excuse me for a second, you guys. And it's the, also the same thing for you on the flip side when it comes to your losses. When it comes to your losses, most of the things I did back then, I still had the same problems today, right? As long as, and that's, well, not as long as, but I have those problems sometimes when I don't stay up to date on my records. So that's why your records are so important. It tells you what not to do and what you should do. So make sure whichever way you decide, you keep some type of record some type of information so you can get better as a trader and have data to look back upon. So with that being said, man, um, let me see if it's any more charts that we need to trade. If, if you guys have anything you want to see, make sure you go ahead and drop it in chat. Let's see. Australian dollar. Let's check that out for D. You know, that's one of his favorite pairs to trade. Today, they're making a little up move coming back up to that 78 cents level we talked about that last night dollar swiss is making its way back down me and darren told you guys last night we were both short biased on that trade we were telling you that it should come back and test these lows at 90 and it looks like it's on its way so if you guys caught that shout out to you thank you for tuning in and listening to us man that's all we want we want to come here and give you good information that you can use for yourself that's it now let's see if it's any stocks we need to look at Crypto, Dogecoin is up a little bit for my Dogecoin traders. It's back above 50 cents. I mean, if you look at this chart right here, does this not like does this not look like the Dow Jones that we just traded, where you have an uptrend, you have a big move to the upside, prices pull back to that last high, and then continue moving higher. That's what we're seeing right now on Dogecoin. I don't know if it can keep if it can keep continuing doing that, but based on the chart, we have to say yes. And uh, before I go, the last thing I want to talk about is crude oil. Remember, we had our presentation last night on crude oil, and we talked to you guys about that. So let's look at the chart. Let's break it down to the hourly. Today, we're having a nice little up move for my crude oil traders. So shout out to you guys. But with that being said, man, that wraps up everything that I wanted to cover for today. I appreciate you guys so much for tuning in to the Bison Trading Live series for May 14, 2021. It's been great. Make sure you tune in next week, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. On Tuesday and Thursday, we'll be here 9.35 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And on Friday, it's a normal Friday, so we'll be here at around 9, 10, 9, 15 ish. We'll let you know which time it'll be. But until then, man, you guys be safe out there. Make good trades. Be patient. And most importantly, don't chase the market. Let this market come to you.